Hello, welcome back. This is week three of our elective on pursuing health, as we focus on being good stewards of the body that God has given us. Thank you for taking the time to watch again. I want to start off by um, asking you a question. How was your week this past week? Was it busy, maybe even hectic, or would you even describe it as being stressful? Unfortunately, that's how many of our weeks go uh, very often. And that's actually going to be the topic today that we're going to be looking at. So I hope that you'll stick around as we discuss that topic. Um, first, I want to briefly review over what we've discussed weeks one and two. In week one, we looked at the biblical foundation of why we should pursue health and be good stewards of our body. We saw that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that we are called to be stewards of the body that God has given us. We also looked in week one at exercise and that regular exercise is really a necessary part to maintaining health. We also saw that um, everyone should have a goal of trying to exercise 30 minutes a day, at least five days a week. Week two, we discussed nutrition. That was last week. And we looked at um, the fact that healthy eating patterns when paired with regular exercise can really be an integral part of attaining and maintaining good health and also preventing chronic diseases. Uh, we looked at things like the macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Um, we looked at how fiber is beneficial for our health and how we need to be um, aware and cautious with the amount of added sugar that we add into our diets. Um, we also looked at building healthy eating patterns and incorporating nutrient-rich foods into our diets, including a lot of fruits and vegetables. So now for week three, I would like to uh, dive into the topic of stress. There's a lot of different topics that we could have covered, but I think this one is an important one because when you think about stress, it's something that really does affect so many of us, whether you're young or old, various stages of life, life in different positions. Um, stress very commonly comes in and affects, affects our life. And it's something that we have to deal with and manage. And the Bible actually has something to say about this topic. So I think it's going to be important to um, find out about what the Bible says and how biblic biblically we can deal with stress that encounters that comes into our life. Um, first, kind of more of a medical definition of what is stress. The Cleveland Clinic described it as the body's reaction to any change that requires an adjustment or response. And the body reacts to these changes in physical, mental, and emotional responses. So you see that our body is constantly being um, faced with different challenges and things that we have to cope with, whether that's physically, emotionally, um, or even mentally. You think about um, if you've ever had to maybe give a speech or talk in front of some people. Um, you might get a little nervous and anxious. Um, you notice that your mouth starts to uh, become dry, your palms are sweaty, um, your heart rate even is a little elevated. Those are all things going on in your body that are um, affecting those uh, physical parameters. Um, you think about maybe uh, a drive to work or drive to school in the morning and maybe you're late and rushing and then a car pulls out in front of you. There's an emotional response there that you have to deal with. So we see that stress and stressful situations are around us all the time. And we need to think about how are we dealing with the stresses of life? What does the Bible has, have to say about how we um, deal with stress in life? And what should our focus be? You know, our body is designed to experience stress and react to it. Um, we're going to look here briefly at some of the underlying more physiological aspects of um, what's going on when we encounter a stressful situation. Um, but our body was designed to have this fight or flight um, mechanism, and that's partly for um, survival. Um, going into a little bit of the science behind it, uh, Deep in the brain, there's a specific part of the brain called the hypothalamus, and that's kind of one of the main command centers of the brain. And any time you have a stressful situation, um, the hypothalamus can take over and start to send out signals that there's um, stress going on. Um, it can send signals down to the adrenal glands, which sit atop the kidneys, 
and um, it can sig signal via um, hormonal pathways, even using nerves as well. And from the adrenal glands, that's where we see two important hormones that can be um, sent out into the body. And you've probably heard of both of these before. One is adrenaline, and then another is cortisol. Um, what are these uh, hormones, what are these chemical substances, what are they doing in our body as they're secreted by the adrenal glands? Um, well, adrenaline, it's that immediate reaction when we are confronted with a stressful situation. Um, it causes our heart rate to increase, our pupils to dilate. Um, we get this surge of energy and focus. Um, so that's what adrenaline is causing our bodies to do and react. That's actually what's happening uh, during a stressful situation. Then there's the other um, hormone that we can talk about, and that's cortisol. Um, this has also been called the stress hormone. And it's more um, there to help in maybe a life-threatening situation. Maybe someone's been in a car accident and they're losing blood. Cortisol can be there to help to stabilize your body, regulate body fluids, regulate your blood pressure. But unfortunately, if stress is there chronically over long periods of time, cortisol can stay elevated in the body and it can lead to things like depressed immune system, um, elevated blood pressure over long periods of time, even elevated blood sugars, and that can lead to wear and tear and chronic stress on our bodies. So that is just some of the underlying medical uh, look at stress and what's going on from a physiologic standpoint. Um, you know, stress, as we've already kind of touched on it, it can be a good thing, acute stress, maybe in a dangerous situation where you're having to react quickly. And that's why God um, has these hormones in this system in place. But chronic stress over long periods of time can be dangerous and damaging to our bodies and can cause us to be able not to um, function as we need to, uh, as we look to focus on serving the Lord and doing what He's ca called us to do. Um, a few uh, statistics, and just as we look, about, uh, look at our population and uh, our country in general, I was looking at a New York Times article. It was published last year, but it said, Americans are some of the most stressed people in the entire world. Um, in their survey, they um, ask people, do you feel like you're stressed a little, a lot? And over 55% of the Americans um, felt like that they were stressed a lot during the day. So um, over half of the participants said, hey, a lot of times during the day, I'm feeling stressed. Um, globally, it was interesting. Um, it said that only 35% of the participants said that they felt stressed during a lot of the day. But you do think about our American culture and the things that we're having to deal with and all of the things that are bombarding us. Um, you know, we're busier than ever. Sometimes we're overcommitted. Um, in this age of technology everywhere, um, technology and the ads, they try to say that um, it's going to make your life easier and it's going to make things less hectic. But it, it does seem like a lot of times that the technology actually increases um, the stress and pressures on our life. We all have smartphones now, these little computers in our pocket that we constantly can be looking at emails and text messages, receiving phone calls, even um, focusing on apps and social media. There's just so many things that are begging for our attention and that can um, actually lead to increased stress in our life. Um, things also like poor sleep or just poor sleep habits that can um, lead us down the road of uh, having more stress. Um, you know, you think of some of the external things that can bring stress into our life, just normal life events. And when you think of major life events that can increase stress in your life, there's things such as, you know, the death of a family member or spouse. And that's natural that that's going to be a more stressful time. Um, maybe someone's experienced a job loss or even a new diagnosis of some illness or some injury that you've undergone. Those are also times of um, more intense stress in someone's life. Um, many times stress comes from relationship issues. Um, maybe it's in the home or at the workplace. Those can be times and opportunities where stress can be increased. Um, we can also have stress due to financial um, problems or pressures. Um, and maybe that's related to the job situation as well. 
Maybe there's also pressures if you're at school, you have deadline and homework and papers that you have to write. Those can also be times of, of stress and pressure. So I think we've made it clear that as Americans, as Christians, we are going to face stress, stressful situations and pressures really every day of our life. So the, the real question is, how do we deal and cope with that from a biblical perspective? Um, Right before we get to that and looking at the biblical perspective, I do want to just touch on um, a few of the more physical manifestations and even in some of the dangers of allowing chronic stress to um, rule your life and be present in your life. A few of the physical signs of chronic stress could include elevated blood pressure. That can be something that causes um, that is caused by chronic stress, stress in someone. Um, even poor sleep, headaches, digestive problems. You even think about some of the maybe uh, emotional or cognitive aspects of chronic stress and how that can affect people. Um, you see people that deal with um, severe anxiety or even having panic attacks. That can be due to the chronic stress that they're having to um, deal with day in and day out. Um, maybe memory problems, also poor judgment or focus. Those also can be manifestations of chronic stress in someone's life. And we think about why just from a physical standpoint is chronic stress, um, why is it dangerous to our health? What can it do? Well, we already touched on this some that the, the elevated cortisol levels um, and things like that can drive up our blood pressure and someone that has increased blood pressure for long periods of time, that can lead to some very serious health um, issues, including heart issues might lead to heart attacks. Also, it could lead to strokes as well. So that's something that um, obviously would negatively impact your ability to function and do what you need to do. Um, also, uh, suppressed immune system is another way that uh, chronic stress can uh, hamper your body's ability to um, function. It will limit the ability to fight infection and to just overall be as healthy. So those are just a few of the manifestations and even dangers and things that chronic stress can do to your physical body. But now I think we need to move to the most important part. And as we've already said, stress is all around us. We face that every day. We know it can be harmful to our body. But what does the Bible say about stress about being anxious. And I have a few passages that I'd like us to look at now as we um, look at this topic of being uh, stressed, being anxious. So the first uh, passage is in Matthew chapter 6, and it's a um, very, very important pas passage in the Bible when it talks about being anxious, about being worried, fearful. And I'd like to read a few verses in the passage. I'm not going to read the entire passage, but in Matthew 6, uh, verses 25 through 34, we see that the Bible has something to say here about being anxious. So in verse 25 of Matthew 6, 6, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So we see this command, and it is a command that we're not supposed to be anxious. Do not be anxious. And in this passage, that's actually repeated three times. Here in verse 25, down in verse 31, and then again in verse 34 as this passage wraps up. You think about people that are anxious and uh, feeling stressed all the time. Uh, anxiety can really be all-consuming. It can uh, really take your mind and that's all you are consumed with. And what that does is it really just narrows down your scope of focus where instead of looking up and seeing for ways that you can minister for God, minister to other people, um, be a witness in the community, you can very commonly find that your mind is so caught up in being anxious and you're just focused on yourself and what you're worried about. So we see this command here in this passage that our focus and uh, our, um, our purpose in life, we're going to look down in verse 33 here in a minute, is very different than just being focused on our food, our physical needs. We're not supposed to be anxious about those things. Instead, we're supposed to have a different focus. Um, in verse 31, it says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But 
Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we really see the focus of this passage. It's driving us to verse 33, where it says, Don't be anxious about these other physical things, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And that's really the biblical answer, is where is your focus? Where is your trust? Is it on um, what you can do or looking for um, just the daily provisions of life? Or is your focus on seeking after God and His righteousness? Um, that's, that's the answer that the world doesn't have. And that's the answer that the Scripture does give us. And this passage is reminding us we can't be anxious we can't be focused on just our physical needs. We have to focus on uh, seeking God's kingdom and looking to serve Him. And we find answers in God's Word through coming to church and hearing um, Scripture preached, uh, even through fellowship with Christian friends as well. Um, I came across a very, um, I thought, a very uh, great quote here about anxiety and why it's so harmful. Um, this was in one of the commentaries I was reading. It says, anxiety is wrong because it represents a failure to trust God as provider. When we're anxious, it really does come back to a heart issue. It's a matter of our lack of trust in God, who is our creator, our provider, our savior. He's given us everything we need spiritually and physically, but when we're anxious and we focus on um, thinking about the stresses of life and let those overwhelm us, it shows us that our heart and our focus is not in the right place, that we're not trusting in God to provide and to um, take care of us as He already has said many times in His Word that He will. Um, I'd like to then look at a parallel passage to this, um, and that's in Luke chapter 10, in verse 38 through 42. Um, this is a well-known story about Jesus when He's visiting Martha and Mary. And um, I'll read uh, here uh, several of the verses. And in verse 38 of Luke 10, it says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister, sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will, which will not be taken away from her. So we see here in this passage um, two contrasting individuals. We have Mary, who is sitting at the Lord's feet, and she's listening. She's hearing what he has to say. And then we have Martha, who is distracted. She's anxious about many things, anxious and troubled, the passage said, about many things. You can see her focus is not singular. It's not on the Lord. She's looking at all these events, and maybe some of these tasks are needed and necessary, but at the end of the day, her focus is not where it needs to be. It's distracted. And I think that's a good reminder for us that throughout all the challenges and pressures of life that we need to make sure that our focus is on the Lord on His Word and what He wants us to do, if our focus is squarely on Him, then all these other pressures and stressful things throughout our life won't consume us and overwhelm us, and we won't be distracted. We'll be able to sit quietly at Jesus' feet and listen to what He has to say. Um, so there's one other passage that I would like to look at, but I'm going to save that for the end of the lesson today. Um, I would like to just now go over some practical tips on how to manage stress. We've seen that stress is all around us. is something that we all do encounter in our life. Um, some of the harmful um, ways that stress can show up it's in our bodies and even how it can damage our health. And then we've just looked at the biblical perspective about being anxious and where our focus should be. Um, some practical tips. First, some um, biblical tips to how we should manage stress. These are things that on a daily basis we can utilize to um, combat stress that, in, that comes into our life. Um, first is reading and meditating on Scripture. God's given us His Word to understand Him more, and it can be used as we read and then also meditate on it throughout the day to clean and purify our minds, 
to um, keep our minds from being um, bogged down in the stresses and pressures of this world. Another way that we can manage stress is to pray. Ask the Lord to help us to not be um, focused on uh, things outside of His will for us that might distract us. Pray and ask Him for His help to trust Him to keep our focus where it needs to be. Um, sometimes um, using a fellowship opportunities with other believers can be an opportunity to um, get benefit and even to give benefit in helping those that are stressed, but also for um, ourselves to seek encouragement through that Christian fellowship and hearing words of encouragement. Um, we can also look at practicing gratitude and being thankful, and that's something we're going to look at in the last passage here in a few minutes. Um, if we're more thankful in our lives, that's going to help us to be um, less focused on the stresses and pressures of our life. But if we look to God and everything that He's done for us, um, then that's going to help us keep our focus where it needs to be as well. Um, some other practical things um, that uh, we can think about doing. Um, exercise. Exercise is a good way for our bodies to deal with stress, whether that's just going out for a, a walk, um, stretching, um, even things like deep breathing. Those are things that we can use to help um, readjust different levels in our body and that God can use in our body to help keep our body in equilibrium. Um, getting proper sleep is very important. Um, if you have not been um, sleeping for adequate lengths of time, then you're more likely to not be able to deal with and manage stress well. Um, having a good diet, which we looked at last week, that's also can be an important factor in managing stress. Um, and then also having hobbies and, and things you enjoy doing can also be a way to um, get your mind off um, the stresses, stresses and pressures of life. Um, managing your time well is also important. We can't always uh, commit to everything we would like to. Sometimes we do have to say no and take times for uh, relaxation, for rest, um, and God can use that to help make sure that we're not um, overtaxing our bodies. Um, the last passage I'd like to look at as we kind of wrap up this whole uh, se session on stress is in uh, Philippians 4, and that's verses 6 and 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So here again, we see that command that we're not supposed to be anxious about anything, and that really um, can be a challenge for all of us um, to not be anxious about anything. You know, each of us have things that we're more uh, tending to be anxious about. But this verse is clear. We're not supposed to be anxious about anything. But instead, what are we to be doing? We're supposed to be using prayer and looking to God with thanksgiving to keep our minds focused on Him. It's interesting, a few verses earlier, it talks about rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So if we have this spirit of thanksgiving and rejoicing, that's going to help us to not be anxious. So that can be something that we can look to replace times of anxiety in our life and stress by praying and asking the Lord to help us, but by also expressing our gratitude and thankfulness to Him. And then we see in verse 7, what is the gift that God gives us when we're not anxious, when we do pray and we're thankful? He gives us this gift of peace. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard our hearts and minds. So there again is the answer. God can give us peace during stressful times of life. And that peace, it surpasses all understanding and it can guard our hearts and minds. That's something the world can't and doesn't understand. It's something only that God can give. And it's something daily we have to pray and ask Him to help us help us with. I hope this session has been helpful as we've looked at stress, how to deal with it, what the Bible has to say, and where our focus should be. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. Next week will be our fourth and final session of this elective, and that's the topic of sleep that we'll be talking about. So I hope you'll join me for that elective, and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Thank you.